all, I'm Karen Morgan, and this is the Purple Bike Podcast. Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about 1998. 1998 was a super important year for me because that was the year I first became a mom. My son Axel was born that year and he's now 22 years old and one of the coolest people I know. So 1998 was a very good year. Some other cool things happened in 1998. Google was founded that year by Larry Page and Sergey Brin who were both PhD students at Stanford and had previously created the web site as a research project. Thanks guys. The Winter Olympics were held in February of 1998 in Nagano, Japan. The 1998 Winter Olympics were the first time that we saw snowboarding and women's ice hockey as new sports. We also saw the reintroduction of curling. I love curling. Curling is the bacon of sports. It is super fun and it's also way harder than it looks. But if you have a place near you that you can try curling, I highly recommend it. Who knew that sweeping would be so much fun? I'm not really sure what was happening with music and me in 1998, but when I look at the list of pop songs, there weren't a whole lot that I really liked. A few that I kind of remember were by Will Smith, Faith Hill, Third Eye Blind, and Bare Naked Ladies, a great band out of Ontario, Canada, and they had been working long before 1998, but that year their fourth album, Stunt, was their breakout success in the United States. There were some good TV shows that premiered in 1998 that I did watch. We watched Sports Night, which was created by Aaron Sorkin about a sports news show. It only ran for two seasons, but it was really well written and it was very funny. We also saw the first year of Will and Grace. Will and Grace was a great show about Will, who was a gay lawyer, and his best friend Grace, who was a straight interior designer. They also had some very funny friends, Karen Walker and Jack McFarland. This was a really fun and well-written show and it has, I think, probably the best Karen character written for television. We also first saw Sex and the City in 1998. This was created by Darren Starr for HBO, and it was adapted from Candace Bushnell's book. The show ran for 94 episodes over six seasons. It was set in New York City. It followed four women that were in their late 30s who may or may not have been super likable to me, but, but the show was fairly entertaining as they discussed all of each other's private details of each other's lives that probably should have been more private. It was sort of fun to watch, but I I didn't have a whole lot in common with these women. Sorry, Darren Starr. There were several kids TV shows that premiered in 1998 that I would soon come to know and love quite well. We had JJ the Jet Plane, which was a PBS show about airplanes that had weird faces that lived at the Terrytown Airport. The planes and the ground vehicles were like CGI animated characters, but all the humans on the show were live actors. And it was fun. It was a really good show to turn on for toddlers to watch while you could just sit still for a few minutes. Sugar, spice, I really everything. loved the Powerpuff Girls. The Powerpuff Girls were created by Craig McCracken and produced by Hanna-Barbera for the Cartoon Network. Now, Craig McCracken originally developed this show back in 1992 while he was just in his second year of art school. He originally produced it as a cartoon short, and the title was Whoop-Ass Stew, which I think should have been the name. Whoop-Ass Stew is the greatest name for a show ever. But ultimately, it became the Powerpuff Girls, who were Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup. And they were three kindergarten girls that had superpowers. They lived in Townsville with their dad, who was a scientist named Professor Utonium, and they fought bad guys using their superpowers. They were so cool, and you can bet that when I had a daughter, we totally got into the Powerpuff Girls, including a Powerpuff Girls birthday party with a Powerpuff Girls birthday cake. 
1998, we also saw the first episodes of Elmo's World. Elmo's World is one of the things that I remember most from when my kids were little. They loved it. And thankfully, I didn't mind it because we saw it a lot. Elmo's World was a segment that they showed at the end of Sesame Street. It premiered in November of 1998. It originally ran for 15 minutes at the end of each Sesame Street episode. If you don't know who Elmo is, he is a three-year-old bright red Muppet voiced by Kevin Clash. Elmo has a goldfish named Dorothy, and there were other characters like Mr. Noodle and Mr. Noodle's brother, Mr. Noodle, and Mr. Noodle's sister, Ms. Noodle, and Mr. Noodle's other sister, Ms. Noodle. Elmo came around at a time that was really good for me and my little kids. It was educational, it was entertaining, and it taught us all great skills in how to ignore people's voices when they are annoying. The number one movie at the box office in 1988 was Armageddon, with a great theme song from Aerosmith. It was a science fiction disaster film about an asteroid heading to collide with Earth, and these guys had to go out into space and drill a hole into the middle of it and blow it up. It had Bruce Willis, Billy Bob Thornton, Ben Affleck, Liv Tyler, Steve Buscemi. It was a really fun movie to watch. But Armageddon should not be confused with Deep Impact, which also came out in 1998. Deep Impact had Morgan Freeman and Robert Duvall and it had a very similar, okay, kind of the same plot about a comet. Is that different from an asteroid? I don't know, but it also was heading to destroy Earth and in Deep Impact they had to go put explosives on the comet just to make it change its course. Same movie, kind of the same plot, but Deep Impact did not have the cool theme song from Aerosmith like Armageddon did. The big Oscar winner of 1998 was Shakespeare in Love, which won Best Film, Best Actress for Gwyneth Paltrow, Best Supporting Actress for Judi Dench, and Best Original Screenplay for Mark Norman and Tom Stoppard. I thought the biggest Oscar winner for 1998 should have been Saving Private Ryan. It had 11 Oscar nominations, including Best Actor for Tom Hanks, but it only won five. Best Cinematography, Best Sound, Best Sound Effects Editing, Best Film Editing, and Best Director for Steven Spielberg. We had some great kids' movies out in 1998. Eddie Murphy had two kids' movies out that year, Dr. Doolittle and Disney's Mulan, where he was the voice of Mushu the Dragon. Disney also came out with a remake of The Parent Trap that had Lindsay Lohan, Dennis Quaid and Natasha Richardson. My favorite kids movie that year, and it's still one of my favorite movies altogether, was A Bug's Life. A Bug's Life was a Walt Disney Pixar film about bugs, and it had the voices of Dave Foley, Kevin Spacey, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Phyllis Diller, Richard Kind, David Hyde Pierce, Dennis Leary, just a whole bunch of other people, including my favorite, Bonnie Hunt. It was the second film produced by Pixar. It was about an ant named Flick who was looking for some tough warriors to save his colony from the hungry grasshoppers. But instead of hiring warrior bugs, he ends up hiring a circus troupe of insects instead. The wonderful Randy Newman composed the music for this movie. And Dave Foley, who I adore, was the voice of Flick. I first became a fan of Dave Foley's when he was with the kids in the hall and then on the sitcom news radio. Dave Foley is hilarious and super talented and is in so many projects. Just look him up. Now, the movie A Bug's Life is not to be confused with the movie Ants, which also came out in 1998, but really wasn't as good as A Bug's Life. Ants was from DreamWorks, and it was also a computer animated movie about bugs. Ants featured the voices of Woody Allen, Gene Hackman, Sharon Stone, Sylvester Stallone, and Christopher Walken. There was a public feud between Steve Jobs and John Lasseter of Pixar and Jeffrey Katzenberg of DreamWorks due to the parallel production of the similar film happening the same year as Bugs Life. So we had two animated bug movies and two movies with asteroids hurling towards Earth in 1998. What was happening out there in Hollywood that year? Other movies in 1998 were Sliding Doors, and that had Gwyneth Paltrow and John Hanna. I liked this movie a whole lot, even though I really don't like Gwyneth Paltrow. It showed two timelines for a story about this woman who, if she makes the train, one timeline happens, and if she misses the train, the other timeline happens, and how
how she proceeds on either path. I really liked this movie and I love John Hanna. We also got to see The Horse Whisperer, which was based on the book, which I really liked. The movie starred Robert Redford, Kristen Scott Thomas, Sam Neill, Diane Weist, and it introduced us all to the talented Scarlett Johansson. It was a good film, but kind of a sad story. Sandra Bullock had two movies out in 1998, Practical Magic, which she did with Nicole Kidman about two sisters who are witches. She also had Hope Floats with Harry Connick Jr., which was a very sweet rom-com. We had some action movies or sort of action movies. There was Ronin with Robert De Niro and John Renault. I really liked that one. We had Enemy of the State with Will Smith and Gene Hackman, also good. And we had Out of Sight with George Clooney and Jennifer Lopez, which was fun and kind of like a cops and robbers movie, but it was really, really well done. And yay, we had some funny movies in 1998. We got to see There's Something About Mary from my buddies Peter and Bobby Farrelly. This had Cameron Diaz, Matt Dillon, Ben Stiller, Chris Elliott with some other cameo rows from my friends in Boston who are also comics. You will never look at a zipper the same way, gentlemen, or hair gel either, ladies. Adam Sandler had two funny movies out in 1998. The Wedding Singer with Drew Barrymore was set in the 80s, so it was super fun with all the 80s music and nostalgia. He also had The Water Boy, which has inspired many sound bites in my home. And we also got to see The Big Lebowski, which was a Joel and Ethan Cohen movie starring Jeff Bridges, John Goodman, Steve Buscemi, and a whole bunch of other really funny and talented people. I highly recommend you watch The Big Lebowski more than one time. But my favorite movie of all of 1998 was You've Got Mail, which was written and directed by Nora Ephron and co-written with her sister Delia. It had Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan, a whole bunch of really great people in, in an ensemble cast. Now I own You've Got Mail on VHS, on DVD, probably somewhere I've purchased it in a streaming app. It's just a really sweet romantic comedy about a woman who owns a bookstore who gets put out of business by the big corporate bookstore that moves in around the corner. You've Got Mail focuses on people using email, which when the film came out was still relatively new and it required a dial-up internet connection to happen. You've Got Mail is actually based on a 1937 play from Hungary, which was later remade into a film in 1940, which was later adapted as a movie musical in 1949, and was later adapted as a Broadway musical in 1963. So there's a lot of history behind the creation of You've Got Mail, which Nora Ephron updated using email. There's actually even a little bit of Jane Austen's pride and prejudice in the story, and Nora Ephron actually includes that when Joe Fox and Kathleen Kelly discuss that book in the film. All I know is that You've Got Mail is a movie that I love and every time I see it come on TV when I can watch it my kids are like no not again but I think I love it so much because Nora Ephron had such a talented way of combining a romance story with comedy and some really great smart dialogue. So as 1998 came to an end, my family came to a beginning with our first child born in December. Parenting is the hardest and most rewarding job on the planet. It's not for the faint of heart. It requires you to do a lot of work, but with love. And then you have to do things like learn to tune out the sound of Elmo's high-pitched voice. But then you get to go to really funny movies like Bugs Life with your kids and look like you're just going to see it for your kids when you're also really going going to see it for yourself. Join me next time when we talk about 1999. When we got MySpace on the internet, Keanu Reeves took the red pill in the Matrix, and we all met a pineapple who lived under the sea. Thanks for listening, everybody. Y'all have a great day.